OK, excellent. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone, I'm, and, and welcome. For those of you who have not uh, been before in this session, I'm David Marimon, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kachum. I have been doing augmented reality for the past 14 years, so AR has become practically a way of life for me. I'm, a, of course, a believer, and I, I hope that you are as well. And I'm going to talk about uh, retail and how retailers can benefit from augmented reality and other surrounding um, technologies. Let me talk to you about Kachum very briefly. So what we do primarily is sell uh, visual shopping solutions. So we have proprietary technology in three main fields, image recognition, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. And we use this to enhance um, uh, mobile and web applications uh, in different domains that allow consumers to basically connect the physical world with the digital world uh, in shopping experiences. So being able to scan uh, magazines that have ads where they can scan that page and go to an online uh, shopping experience, have interactive experiences that allow them to understand better the product, and also browse online catalogs in a much more intuitive way, uh, finding similar items to the ones that they are <clears throat> sorry, browsing. Uh, we have um, been collaborating with a number of companies globally, uh, top tier agencies and, and some of the, the best online shops out there for, for very different things and, and practically all around the world. And as a company, um, we have been leading the path of uh, this kind of interactions. We have achieved more than 750 million interactions to date. That's real interactions that led to an online purchase or additional information, reviews, etc. We are 20% more accurate than our closest competitor in terms of image recognition. And we are chasing a big goal of achieving 10 billion interactions per year by uh, 2025. Now I'm going to enter more into the topic of this, of this presentation, so augmented reality uh, in retail and what it means and, and what, is, what are the possibilities. So probably the first question that you ask is why retail? Why is it so important? And actually if you go to the expo floor probably you will see a lot of um, talk going on about industrial and manufacturing and all of these verticals but actually uh, the forecasts say that by 2025 retail will be the dominant sector in augmented reality. So I think that um, there's a lot to be done there and I will, I will uh, be talking about the possibilities and, and giving you some examples. So if we talk about visual shopping solutions, if we think about technologies like augmented reality, image recognition, visual search, artificial intelligence, um, they can help consumers take faster and better decisions when shopping. This can then lead to generate revenue and drive omnichannel um, engagement. For those of you that not, don't, haven't heard about omnichannel before, the idea is that a retailer has a physical and a digital um, uh, shop and for the user it's important to be able to move from one to the other seamlessly and even some brands have a social presence and be able to move from one to the other at the same time. Now if we think about omnichannel, uh, the idea is that ena to enable interactions with products and brand collateral uh, at every touch point of the cons customer journey. So let's talk a little bit about the customer journey and the different, those different touch points. So in this circle, um, uh, we, we, I'm going to touch about uh, on, on, all of this, on all of these different stages of the shopping purchase, uh, of the shopping uh, process. And the idea here is that retailers need to capitalize and be different at each one of these stages for them to stand out and for their products to be uh, purchased. Um, so let's start with the, the very first moment. So the first moment where there's one, the, there is a, I want to know more, is right after the, the trigger moment, where, where there is a spike of interest by the, by the consumer. So their curiosity must be satisfied by, by retailers for that brand to be considered even. So let me give you an example of somebody who's tapping into that. Uh, there's a company called Tap2C who have created a platform for marketers where they can upload their ads and upload their, their content and connect it directly to a shopping experience. Also allow consumers to get more information just by scanning those pages in catalogs and in ads that they see 
uh, in the physical world, even in some cases adding some, some level of gamification. And the advantage of creating that is that immediately you move from the physical world into the digital world in order to continue the journey um, there. Then the next step in the, in the customer journey is evaluating choices. So especially if consumers are overloaded to, with too many choices, they, they do have to find a means to select, right? Now, uh, the, the data shows that about 83% of shoppers use their cell phones while they're at the stores. Actually, one in every $3 spent right now is influenced by mobile. So companies leveraging on mobile experiences can help people take better decisions. And an example of that is that about 62% of shoppers want to be able to scan a product to, on their mobile devices, on their personal mobile devices, to receive more uh, reviews and recommendations. So with visual shopping, we can eliminate text search, we can eliminate browsing through categories, we can go much faster to helping them choose us as a, as a brand or as a product. So here's another example. Ubinum is an e-commerce site that sells liquors and winery. And basically, they use Kachum to, to allow consumers to scan the label of those bottles throughout a very large catalog of 90,000 plus products. And instead of searching by a text, they just snap a picture and go directly to the product information. This is a web app, so there's no, in, no need for installing an actual app. So this also breaks a lot of barriers for the consumers. Another example is using artificial intelligence to provide visually relevant, relevant alternatives to the product that the user is browsing through. Okay? So say you are visiting a website of your preferred marketplace and you see a pair of shoes that you really like. Sometimes the recommendations are based on what other people were browsing. Okay? Uh, but we can provide a recommendation based on visual relevancy. So if you're looking at this pair of shoes, you want it to have this kind of laces, you want it to have this kind of height. Okay? And this can be done with um, solutions like the ones that we propose using deep learning. Moving on through the customer journey, um, now that we have evaluated a number of choices, the user is ready to shortlist and decide. Now, at this point, the consumer wants to experience the product. Okay? They want to feel it, they want to touch it, they want to see how their life will change once they have the product. So this is probably the, the key moment where we can use AR in a most compelling way to help them push to the next um, level. Actually, <clears throat> about two to three online shoppers are doing what's called web roaming. So web roaming consists on basically, you do all your choices online, and then you physically go to the brick and mortar store to do the final purchase because you want to touch it, you want to feel it. At that moment, the catalog is shrinked to the assortment that you have there. But using augmented reality, we can have a much, uh, a much better um, and compelling experience where we can show uh, that product in different styles, in different colors, etc. So let me give you an example of how a web roaming can be done in a way that can drive these um, shoppers. So Apollo Box is a company based here in California, and they have an online shop of furniture, okay, and, and other items for home decoration. And what they provide for their consumers is a try before you buy type of experience. So you open the camera and you see how a couch could look like at your home. What they experience is actually a boost of 25% in conversion rate on their sales. And what's even more uh, interesting is that the, the, the customer said that it was fun and rewarding to actually use augmented reality and that the data shows that those users using the, this AR capability are spending an additional 10 minutes on the application. So that's a lot of time allocated to a single marketplace. Uh, moving on um, to the next stage and making the purchase. Um, sorry, I have a distracting view here. Um, the, here the importance is of omnichannel. So I come back to what I was saying before, and the idea is that users want to make this purchase both f physically and digitally, and sometimes the digital wall and the physical wall have to merge for them to be able to proceed. So the idea is that 
more and more consumers are getting used to use their mobile and they are getting used to have digital as part of the shopping experience. Okay? Um, and, and this is something that we are going to see more and more. Here's another example, a company in Germany called MyMuesli. Um, what they offer basically, from the name you get it, is Muesli. And consumers can basically pick an, uh, a variety, a mix of Muesli uh, of their choice. Okay? So they can produce their own mix. Um, they have physical shops and they have an online shop. And what they propose is an application where consumers can kind of feel the idea of mixing physical products. Okay? And they can do that both at home and at the shop. So what they do with the app is they can scan the icons of different, the different ingredients that they want to mix. And by scanning them, it's like picking them up. And then once they have made the choice, adding it to the muesli um, uh, choice that they have. So they use image recognition for this icon um, scanning. And <clears throat> with that in mind, the company is creating an omnichannel, omnichannel shopping experience because consumers ha can have the same experience at home, at the shop, um, using a single mobile app. Moving further into the um, last step, it's as important to manage to sell that product as it is to provide a compelling experience after the purchase. So post-purchase experiences do matter. So it's, um, it's unboxing and it's using the product. Okay? And AR can play a role here. Um, because we can provide assistance to the consumers. Okay? So we can provide tutorials, we can provide how-to videos, and so on, that help them have a satisfactory um, experience. And at the end of the day, that can feed back into uh, sharing that experience with others and helping them believe that that product can, may also fit for them. So here's a final example. Almiral is a global pharmaceutical company that um, sells a number of products, of course. And what they decided is to have a consumer application that allowed um, users to scan the packaging as a means to directly find relevant information about that product. So let me give you an example of why this is useful. One of the things that they sell is inhalers. Okay? So whenever you have to use one of these devices for the first time, it's not quite intuitive. So what they provide is video tutorials on how to use it and when to use it uh, for, for best practices. So this showed to them a lot of patience adherence. So something that they were not able to provide before, which is digital information on something so, such, so traditional as drugs. OK, so now I'm heading to the last slide. And I wanted you to, to take home a couple of, of ideas, a couple of things. So first, two facts. So six out of 10 shoppers prefer shopping in stores that have augmented reality experiences. That's a lot, OK? And Garner um, shows some forecasts that there will be about 100 million consumers using immersive shopping experiences by 2020, OK? So retail is and will be one of the dominant sectors for augmented reality. And there are a number of technologies that can help um, consumers have this omnichannel experience with retailers, image recognition, augmented reality, visual search, artificial intelligence among them. But the idea is that for consumers, what it, it is important is that these technologies can help in the shopping experience for it to become useful, fun, and time saving. Thank you very much. Perfect. So uh, questions? We have one back here. Yes? How do you charge a customer? How do we charge a customer? What's our pricing model? Um, so, we have, um, so we have different products. Actually, for fashion, it's slightly different than for uh, CPGs. So for CPGs, it's basically on the number of, uh, so how large is the catalog that they want to be able to search through. Um, for fashion, it has to be more uh, depending on whether we are creating an opportunity of shopping, so it's more like um, CPC kind of model, or we are uh, helping them save on costs. So by automatically understanding the catalog, um, we can help them reduce manual, manual labor. More questions?
Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we have a booth in the main area. It's 121, so if you want, uh, please come by. Thank you. So definitely a great talk by someone who's been providing a lot of image recognition to a variety of different providers over the years. Um, so as I, as I brought up, uh, Karen will not be joining us uh, for the next um, session. So um, options, I uh, believe in, in uh, you know, keeping things flexible. So what we can do is we can either break for 15 minutes. Um, I can say that you know, we can do a little impromptu if there's anyone that would like to share uh, something that they're working on uh, very quickly. Uh, you're more than welcome to stand up and share, or y'all can network, or whatever you choose for the next 15 minutes. So, I can show a video. Or if you want to, a uh, show of hands, who wants to watch a video from Kachum? So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. Hey, you know what? Show that video, man. Go for it. All right. Hundred and twenty one. Uh, so it's next to the this gaming playground uh, area. Oh wow, shit. Okay. Wow. Right on. Okay. I think I have been speaking here for the past five, so Yeah. As a person <laughs> who's been here for the past eight years, this is definitely the biggest uh, conference that we've had, so thank you everyone for coming. Okay. Um, huh? Uh, give me a second, please. I want to maximize this thing. Uh, I think it's mirroring the screen. So anyway. Music is not coming out, but it has some fantasy. Um, so this is specifically related to the fashion product. Uh, so the idea is to help e-commerce sites uh, in a number of things. And what this video shows is basically how to help them improve things like catalog management, um, uh, boost conversion rates by connecting what I was saying, like uh, a, a product with the uh, entire catalog. So here's how it works. So the, the first uh, idea is to save costs by automatically defining the content of your catalog. Okay. So given an image like this, we are able to say which category very precisely. We work with more than 400 fashion industry colors. We can tell things like the fit, uh, the pattern, such as floral, and whether it has the type of sleeves, the type of color, etc. cetera. Um, the second one would be to provide relevant, relevant visual similarity um, alternatives. So if I'm browsing this dress or I'm browsing this shirt, what other items in the catalog do you have? And this can help retailers that have a problem of stock, for instance. So whenever you're browsing an item that is out of stock, what other things do you have in the catalog that I can buy? Um, and the third one is, um, if you're a fashionista and you're sharing an outfit, how can I turn that outfit into a shopping experience? So we, what we've been working on is connecting the pieces, so that what you saw before with being able to take a picture like this and identify what sun sunglasses, the upper wear, the bag, the shoes, etc. cetera. 